A few months ago, um, I uh, was in Richmond uh, and uh, uh, went flying with uh, Hero Psycho. You can actually find his uh, uh, his channel here on uh, YouTube as well. Um, but uh, he lives in Richmond. I live up in Sterling, and uh, um, I was down there for a wedding. And uh, went down there. I took a bunch of quads with me, uh, and one of the ones I took with me was the iFlight Mega B, and um, the Mega B, uh, when I armed it and gave it a little bit of throttle, got up off the, uh, we were launching from uh, a tractor trailer bed thing. It was like a, a flat, uh, uh, I don't know, what you, I forget what you call it. It doesn't come to mind right this second. But um, it took off and ran away. And no matter how many times I flipped the disarm switch, it didn't disarm. Um, so I don't know what happened to it and it, it flew up and pinned itself against a big steel uh, silo looking thing I, I can't even describe it we were right near the river there in Richmond and uh, uh, we were having a, a fun flying it we were checking out the DJI stuff for the first time you know showing it off that sort of thing but uh, pinned itself right against the wall I couldn't do anything to get it off of there and finally the battery just ran itself out either that or one of the ESCs overheated or something I honestly don't know what happened to it but it fell from I'm gonna say 80 feet up straight down bounced off of something smashed into concrete and uh, I went around I found it uh, and um, one of the motors was done I mean it broke broke the arm off the carbon so it was done so long story short I ordered a new one and this should be it I hope and this is the uh, Mega B iFlight Mega B uh, yeah here it is iFlight Mega B let's see can you even see that it's probably glaring to hell anyway iFlight Mega B HD FT, FPV center whoop frame for DJI air unit it doesn't have the air unit in it but I'm hoping to salvage what I have and so what we're going to do tonight is try and get it all patched back up fix the broken motor I tore it all down I haven't even bench tested it so uh, I'm basically going to treat this kind of like a new build but with some soldering that's already been done but I may end up redoing it so just play along so we are unboxing and it comes, um, it's actually a really nice kit, honestly. Um, I've been pretty impressed with the stuff iFlight's been doing. I really like their Zing motors, or, I mean, I, I got I got probably some of the better quality early ones um, before, you know, they started having, you know, sort of supply and demand issues from what I understand, and, you know, a couple other things. But overall, I've, I've been very happy with their, their Zing motors. I have their... Um, 2306s, uh, 4S motors, so they're probably like, I don't know, 2400 kV or something like that. And I also have their 1206, the Nano, uh, and those I really love. The uh, They're 4500 kV, but they're great 4S. Uh, if you want to scale down like a, a, a 4S to something that you can actually fly and give it, give it heft and weight that makes it feel more like a heavier quad um then i definitely recommend the johnny fpv 2.5 frame because that the the combination of those motors two and a half inch props you, you can run pretty much any prop you want on it and an 850 i mean that's a heavy battery an 850 battery on top the thing feels amazing i mean it it just it feels like a five inch quad when you fly it it's just kind of a fun sort of thing but anyway en enough jibber jabber um so uh, we actually have assembly instructions not that we're gonna need that um and then we got this very cool box here and i'm going to set that down here and um so iFlight is still uh not doing tpu uh these are 3d printed but they're not tpu um which is kind of a ding uh shen drones he has the TPU version. He also can uh, actually. It looks like it's drilled now for 3030. 
Um, but this used to only be drilled for 2020. Uh, actually, those might be for posts, but uh, or maybe not. I, honestly, um, but uh, this frame that was one of the the shortcomings of it was that people complained about not having 30 30 holes and uh, only being able to fly a 2020 stack or two 2020s uh, underneath that DJI air unit there. And then these uh, these TPU uh, or non uh, PLA I should say. PLA or PETG, one of the two, uh, I doubt it's ABS, um, but uh, I mean, you can find the STLs for these and put them out in TPU if you really want to. I, I actually didn't have any issues with the, the plastic being brittle or, or flaky or anything like that, so and they seem to be printed okay, so I'm going to run them like this. And, uh, so let's get, uh, and this is all your little TPU bits. Uh, we've got the the, uh, the bits for the DJI. This kind of, this hugs the unit and holds it to the top plate. And then you've got this little guy here, which holds uh, antenna. And then uh, the little uh, bits up front to hold the camera. Um, and then uh, a couple other, a chin and two straps and I don't even know what those are. I didn't see those on my original. So, little feet it looks like. Little TPU, or not even, is it TPU? It doesn't feel like TPU. Oh yeah, it is TPU. TPU feet. So, not red, but at least it gives you something. All right, let's get this going. Uh, let me double check that we're actually recording. Yes, we are. Good. And here is the original. Yeah, so this is the original. And I tend to use little trays like this to set everything out. So I got a new motor to replace this guy. And I don't know if you can see or hear this, but it just it sticks right there yeah it just it rubs right there so the the something is bent and i didn't feel like figuring out what after the hit it took if you saw plus it's bent on the bottom here it's just not worth it for what's basically a 20 dollar motor and here's the top with and i just dumped out all the screws that's okay we'll dump out all the screws over here do, 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 do. Here are the the DJI unit, and it looks like it survived. Uh, honestly, I haven't even pulled anything off this card to try and you know figure out if it needed anything. It came down hard, pretty much on one corner. Uh, basically, if we pull out the frame, when I found it, it, it had come down like this, uh, sort of a uh, like that and this uh, this guy here just shattered and that motor was hanging free and all the TPU plastics had broke or I'm not even uh, T I keep saying TPU they're PLA or PETG one of the two um, those 3d printed plastics had just shattered everywhere ended up all over the place and um, it was it was dead basically um, and so I was just like you know what pack it up and continue flying my other drones because I brought a bunch and uh, that's what I did so it's even got like fresh I mean I was on like I think I'd run four packs through the thing um, at a park near me and then took it to Richmond thinking oh yeah it flies great and then I got to Richmond and damn thing flew away on me so that's uh that's how it goes sometimes you think oh yeah I got it all I got it all straightened out everything works great and for whatever reason you know loose prop I was plagued with loose props that entire weekend I think every quad I attempted to fly had a loose prop on it of course I, I've never transported props at this point in time other than from my house to the park or vice versa and you know so uh, a loose prop never really factored into my you know checks my pre-flight checks and uh, probably should have but 
Yeah, so this little guy here has um, just a bundle of stuff. And we're just going to take it all out nice and gentle and set it down. So we have, um, we've got our uprights and motor screws and everything else all laid out there. So chin strap and tail and then we've got this guy. And uh, these motors don't look too bad. And I'll get all the screws off of them so that they don't... But yeah, the, these motors didn't seem to take any hits, uh, or at least not many. Um, I'm hoping the ESC survived. It doesn't look all that bad. Um, and held up. And then the, um, the buzzer was giving me trouble, so I snipped the wires on that. And then... This is the cabling for the DJI unit, which looks terrible. And then these little guys. And this looks like it survived, so we're just going to we're going to roll with it. Hopefully it goes back together and flies. So, let's get this buzzer. So, when you're first starting out, you put buzzers on everything. That's my philosophy, and uh, that's exactly what I did. And um, the end result is that I have buzzer wires that I really don't think I need anymore. I'm a whole lot more capable a flyer. I crash much less often, he says, with confidence. And um, the end result of that is that I really don't think I need either one of these uh, this little buzzer connected but even if I did I'd still need to take these off oh come on quit fighting with me I should probably tend this tip a little bit Ugh, it's got Smells like burning plastic already. Ten seconds into this build. Okay. Good. And we're gonna we're gonna go ahead. Double check that we didn't lose any screws into our windings. Yeah, well that looks fine. I don't see any bent, anything too terribly bent. And uh, yeah, all right. So things I want to change about this build. This little cable here. It's terrible and this guy when you have your uh, when you have everything connected up and so that you can go flying you can't plug in your USB cable because your uh, your uh, ducks are in the way and uh, I don't have any sort of adapter or anything else to prevent the ducks from being in the way so what I'd rather do is have it so that um, let's see this is the front and this is the rear is that right I think that's right yeah so we've got 2020 and a 2020 and then yeah make sure that's right uh, this guy fits in the back and this guy fits up front like that yes uh, yeah, the camera goes on this end. The pointy end goes forward. So, what I'd like to do is run this in the rear <laughs> with the uh, USB pointing at the butt. That way I can plug in the USB when I need to and uh, go flying. And then this cable, though, uh, now needs to route to wherever I mount this guy. And as I recall, I cabled or I set the 
the, the pads on this such that yeah the, it, it would reach around like this so I need to be able to plug the cable in and then route it so that it comes in here and not touch between the two so that's the first challenge let's see if we need to we can probably go ahead and rotate this guy 180 degrees now that I look at it and run these long wires at the rear unsolder these guys put this one over here or something to that effect something tells me I'm going to need to lengthen these if I have to turn this 180 degrees and I suspect that I am going to have to turn this 180 degrees to make this work the way I want so step one let's see if we can reduce the amount of random noise going on uh, just by getting rid of this guy let's see come on yeah this is the DJI connector in case anybody hasn't seen one it's um oh god what is it a ph jst ph or yeah i don't know all those connectors have funky names all right so if i i'm just going to temporary mount these guys in here let's find a couple of screws come up through the frame with a couple of little tiny that guy got sheared right off, didn't he? Yep, right off of there. Glad I... Wow. All these got loosened right up, didn't they? Well, that's a concern. I reckon. Okay. Is this... Are these all the... Okay. That one's a little bit longer. A little bit longer now. Okay, that's two. That ought to be plenty for testing purposes. And do I have two other? I don't think I do. Oh yes, yes I do. Right here next to each other. There's one and two. Okay. Let's see if we can get this guy situated such that the USB points out the ass, giving us some sort of useful. Uh, <laughs> good job, Bob. You already screwed up. USB up out the butt and we'll just do caddy corner yeah you gotta you gotta stack these real low for a reason and that is that these guys are only so tall um, and as such they do not uh, you cannot stack your flight controller on top um, uh, or your ESC on top of your flight controller or your flight controller on top of your ESC because it just will not go. It is too tall um, for the for the um, yeah, and uh, that's not going to work. Nope, not going to happen there. Looks like we're moving. 
I didn't like that. Yep, that's how we're going to do it. Guess we better pull all these other off. It's not enough for now. Let's tin this guy pretty decently. Let's start pulling motor wires. Okay, come on now. Let us hope that everything works. Okay, we are going to harden out our ESC. I prefer to do that anyway. And I have a kit somewhere nearby, let's hope, of um, I have a kit of uh, mounting, um, or I'm sorry, uh, cable. Uh, that's what I was going for. Uh, I have a kit of cable stuff, and uh, hopefully I can make all this come together. So, if I were to mount it like this again, like as low as I could get it, How low can I go, is the question. How low can you go? Can I go under? And then come up. So, if I were to if I were to space this guy, like so, right on the deck, give it maybe a couple of these two millimeter nuts or something as spacers, could this work? It might. It might. Know what I need to do? Where to go? My little guy here. I 
again, I think I should really be using a hard stack here, not these little nylon doodads. So much for that one. So this guy is going to run here, and we're going to bring it up, bring it up about like that, and then let's get that guy out. these guys to lift it up and then we want like a, a really short set of I have these little TPU guys I printed out a long time ago Oh, come on, give me a fourth one. Two, three. Ah, I think that's it. Those are all the same. That looks pretty good, I think. Okay, so we've got that. So that'll go under this guy. This all oh, right, yeah. Yeah, no. No matter how you cut it, I need longer wires. But, can I make this work? Maybe. Let's see. Got this in the mail today. Hopefully, I can put these together in such a way. Let's see if this works. Alright, that's the rear. We want it towards the front. Probably just want to go ahead and do it up. Yeah. Let's see if we can do it the way we had originally intended. And start with one of these. 
one of these. guy down on top. Let's see what we got. Alright. Let's see. Can we run it like that? That's going to keep it just up off that plate. I mean, you can just see. I think that's going to work. And then if we run a plastic nut down on those. Yeah. I think that'll go. Now, these guys, we do a bit longer. Need a little bit longer than that, I think. Let's try these two guys. Let's run these two up through these two. Flight control or disappeared on me. It done disappeared on me. What you reckon? guy right here. Tighten him down. And then let's try not to destroy our equipment. What do you say? Squeeze back there, never sleeps at night. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, let's just see. Let's see if we can make this work. We set this guy like so, and this guy needs to settle in. If I put a little piece of Kapton tape on the end of that, I think it'd be okay. Keep them from tip touching and shorten. I reckon that'll work. Yep. And then I don't need to worry too much about my wires anymore. Yeah. I, I'm going to make this work. Yeah, I'm going to make this work like that because uh, I don't feel like lengthening these wires that's my my sole uh, the sole reason why I think I can make this work and I also have uh, sitting over here somewhere one of those race day quad kits uh, that lets me uh, uh, lengthen uh, connector wires uh, to some you know ridiculous amount all right, let's get this guy tightened in. 
to this little TPU spacer. Yeah, if you ever have downtime on your 3D printer and got some TPU loaded up, print yourself out spacers. I'm talking one millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter, four millimeter, five millimeter, etc. Just print out 30 or 50 of each and uh, never worry again about not having the right spacer for the job. Um, these I think were scaled down three M3s. Uh, I think I scaled them for M2 purposes because I needed some spacers for another build I'd done. Actually it might have been I don't remember now. It's been a while. Whatever it was it's uh, probably on the shelf somewhere. Alright and now we're going to do this guy and this guy and we needed the longer of the screws and one of these good 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 and this guy come up through here like so We've got our stuff in position. Now we gotta pull apart this connector and get these wires lengthened without breaking anything, which is a testament in and of itself. Okay, so what I'm gonna do set this guy like this and then put these guys down like so and then use these metal ones to hold, to hold it Yeah, this, uh, I forget which board this was, but it's a Matek, some clone, I'm sure. Um, I really don't remember who made this one. Uh, and it doesn't say. Go figure. Mamba, probably. Looks like something Mamba would do. And I'd, I'd buy Mamba. Uh, 40 minutes. Alright. 40 minutes into this build. Just getting this guy in. What can you do, though? You can't make it go any faster. It goes as fast as it goes. And it's fiddly. You gotta learn as you go. Can't rush things. Or if you do rush, you end up making it worse. Let's try this side. Not too squished. Snug, but not too snug. Moving. Yep. I like that. And then that is oriented correct with the USB out the ass. Good. I didn't fuck that up. And then we are going to find those wire lengtheners. Don't judge me. 
can feel you judging me. Aha! Aha! Yes. I have battery straps for days. Because I have ordered so much crap in the past six months that they just keep sending me battery straps. No, I just have battery straps. I have a bucket of junk. This qualifies as junk. What kind of lengths do we have here? So it looks like I have two different sets of lengths. This is probably perfect, right? I mean, let's compare to... If we had double our length, we'd be sitting pretty, right? That's how I feel. So, let's see here. We've got two wires of about the same length. We've got... These guys all look pretty long to me. So, I'm going to grab some more shorties. Alright, let's see here. That guy doesn't have an end. This guy looks about the same. And this guy looks about the same. And this guy looks about the same. And that's what? Five? And this guy looks about the same. And this purple guy looks about the same. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe it's eight connectors. Eight. Uh, let's take one of these and do I have another short white one? You know what to hell with it. Doesn't matter. Now comes the uh, hard part, not destroying these connectors. Um, yeah, that is definitely the hard part. Okay, so what all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pinch this connector in a vise. And I'm kind of going to lift and try to pull. I, I don't know. These are straight through, right? Yes, they are straight through. Okay, all I'm doing here, I've got one end of this thing clamped in, and uh, hopefully you can see it. I've got one end clamped in, and then the other one, all I'm doing is using that tension that I've got now uh, to help me pull the wire out. So I, I push in towards the wire, I lift up, he says confidently, he lifts up, and then I kind of pull away. And that should do it, and the wire slips out. And then move on to the next one. So get the Exacto under it, lift ever so gently, and then pull up just a little bit at an angle and slide it out. And your goal is not to lift so hard it cracks the plastic. That's the goal. So 
See, like that. I think I might have cracked that plastic. But, whatever. It's a little itty bitty connector, who cares? Okay. Let's go from the other side for a second. Mm -hmm. Come on. This has got to be the boringest part of this video for all you watchers out there. For both of you. Yep. Oh, look, he's building cables again. This will take him 15 minutes. Excruciating pain. You know. oh. Is he done? No, only half done. Okay. Well, son of a bitch, you know. One, two, three, four, five. I broke five. <laughs> five out of eight. <laughs> what do you know? Bob's breaking stuff again. Yes, I know that there's probably a connector in the bag that fits this exact application. But using it goes against everything I believe in. Not really. It, I just, I don't care that much. I, I just, I'd rather just reuse the connector because it's... And if, if if there's a better way to do this, and uh, please leave a comment. Say, hey, dumbass, you know there's an easier way to do that. And I'll say, thanks for the tip. And I'll mention you in my next video. And send you money. Well, one of those is true. Okay, coming down to it, people. Coming right down to it. And I think I, you know, the more of these I do, the better, in theory, I should get. But I think I just get more and more blind. Because lifting these pins, as tiny as they are, you know, I'm going to zoom in with my 4K camera onto this and show you people exactly what I'm doing. You're going to be like, what do you mean, why can't he see that stuff? I 
you know, I'm looking with 40 year old programmer eyes here. I've been staring at computer screens for 20 years. Tiny ass text. At least 20 years. At this point. 20. 97. I was 97. Hmm. Yeah, 1997, first tech job. One down. Little nub goes up. Okay. Yep. This is the best part of the video for the people that want it. You know, I, I hear from people all over the world. And they tell me, oh man, this is the best video yet. You know what part I love the most? The part where you made the cable for a half an hour. It's true. Yep. People everywhere rave, rave, I tell you, about my cable building skills. Yeah. And they didn't know it until they'd seen it. Watch the whole thing. Just how memorable it was going to be for them. But, uh, yeah, they... They truly do love it. Wouldn't think so, but Each their own, I say. Who am I to judge? The cable builder lovers. Yeah. I don't kick chain. Are these connectors different in some way? I mean, they're two pieces of metal. Right? Just the same. Okay, great. There's that one. Watch this cable not even work. Probably be like flight controller doesn't work. You know, just took took the hit too hard. ESC is blown, being pinned against that wall for you know 60 seconds or whatever it was. 
Uh, wooden disarm. Yeah. HDI units toast. All right, you green piece of shit. All right, there we go. Boom. Yeah. Now for the other side. You know what I didn't do? I didn't check the orientation. So what I'm going to have to do here is this is uh, ground VCC one two three four NC and Kerr, and that has. This guy sitting like this. So, Kerr. Uh, Kerr. It's going to be this side. And then. So this one, which goes in this guy with the blade up, like so, says this guy.
There it is. I think that's got it. All right, let's take a little bit of Kapton tape. And All right, let's take a little bit of Kapton tape and uh, see if we can cover up our pins here, just so that they don't end up touching. They will. But you just never can tell. Let's see if we can make some thin washers out of plastic. Do what we want. Okay, thin washers and metal. Washers in the middle. Oops. What we're going to do here is just give this a nice, gentle twist. Okay. Washer. Twist. Get this in shot, hopefully. Okay, washer and twist. That guy on. Don't want to go too tight. Washer. And metal. Okay. There it is. There's the flight stack. Wired up. Good to go. We hope. And, uh, yeah. <coughs> now what we got to do is get our motors reconnected and uh, set in place. And we should be pretty darn close to where we want to be.
this guy all cleaned out here. Don't need that. Yeah. I like it. That feels nice and solid. That is in there good. We are looking pretty good, if you ask me. And then this guy will sit up like so. And the DJI is going to hang under it. So, kind of like that. And that shouldn't be any problem. And we may need to shorten up these guys, but honestly, I'd rather not. I'd rather just leave it long. Okay. Ow. That's what happens when you leave your drawers open. Good. Okay, day. Let's see here. How are we doing? I'm going to uh, stop here. I'm going to mount up these motors again and uh, um, I'll bring you back when they're all mounted before I do any more wiring.